Good morning. Welcome to all our visitors. Hope you will enjoy this day with us. Welcome to our regular members. It is good to be in the house of God again. If you have your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to Luke. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. Luke 17, 11 to 19. Now it happened, as he, who is Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that the, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face and his feet, and at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith made you well. The word relevant has crept into our religious vocabulary. What does this really mean to us? A thing is said to be relevant when it is fit or suits any given requirements, when it is pertinent and applicable, when it has something worthwhile to say at any given stage or in any given place and time. Many today say that the church is irrelevant, that the church has become obsolete, that it is not necessary to go to church anymore. I'll rather spend time home or with family and friends. Some critics have stated this one thing. Five out of every six church buildings in North America could be sold and dismantled without damage to the Christian mission. My question to you this morning, is church still relevant to you? Many are wrestling with this question and they wrestle with this question You see people dropping from from church books. The church doesn't grow because they think church has become irrelevant or obsolete. obsolete. Church has become irrelevant because people feel the sermons are outdated and serve no purpose. I've heard them all, some say. What else can you teach me? Church is irrelevant because the people are dressing up and makes me uncomfortable. By the way, the way we sometimes dress, and and, and I'm I'm not saying here that we should um, not dress appropriately, but many times the way we dress, when someone comes in from the street and they walk through these doors, how will they feel? Sometimes they feel a little bit out of place. Got the best suit, the best dress, 
And I'm not saying that we should not be dressed at our best for God. Church has become irrelevant because it has become just another social club. I can go to any other social club and enjoy life more fully. That's what some people say. Church has become irrelevant because the music is outdated and stems from the Victorian era. I'm not moved by it. Church is irrelevant because I am taxed to death by the free will offerings and the tithes. The church is all about money, money, money. Church is ir irrelevant because it has lost its grip on reality. It has become very exclusive of people, gender, sexual orientation. It has just regressed. Church is not for me anymore. Church is irrelevant because you only find righteous people there. Church is irrelevant because it has lost the love of aspect. I do not feel the love in the church. This is the excuses people have for not coming to church anymore, for not attending church services. Maybe you have uttered one of these excuses and are considering to leave the church to go and find yourself somewhere. The traditional Christian church in the 21st century is finding it more difficult to keep members, not even speaking of growing. They are losing members with an alarming rate. On the other hand, contemporary churches, where everything goes, is filling up. They become social clubs where everything is okay. Just come. Is church still relevant for you today? You're in Luke 17. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem when ten men came to him. As a matter of fact, they came running to him. They recognized who he was. They've heard of all the miracles he did. And they were wondering if he could possibly heal them or cleanse them. Leprosy was an illness that had no cure in those days. And if you, they were, if you were cured, it was very exceptional. They came to Jesus, but they did not come up to him. They stood afar when they saw Jesus, and they called out, Master, have mercy on us. Well, when, when lepers, when lepers came to a, a little town, or when a group of people came towards them, it was the custom to call out, unclean, unclean, so that those people could recognize that they are lepers, and they should stay afar. The church today has become an a, a, uh, institution where, although we say, come, those who are full of sin, we are treating them the sa same that the people treated lepers in the days of Jesus. Now, I have to remind you, and this is probably a gruesome scene, but what lepers look like. Imagine these ten men came to, to Jesus, and Jesus, this is what Jesus saw. Men whose flesh were falling off of their arms, their legs, they had blisters. Some of them probably didn't have fingers. Noses were gone. Sometimes their hair fell out. So probably they were bald, ragged clothes. They were in a, a, a state of decay. And 
here they were standing in front of Jesus. Master, have mercy on us. If you go to the internet and you type in leprosy, images, you will find gruesome scenes of these people. No wonder no one wanted to come near them. They looked bad. They probably smelled bad. They were a, a sight for sore eyes. Leprosy was connected in those days to sin. So if you saw a group of lepers or a leper, you probably said to yourself, I wonder what he or she did. Oh, they were really bad. And you see, Jesus, when he met these ten lepers, he could have said to them, you're bad people. You're bad. But he didn't. He didn't. When they called out to, him, to them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. Why did Jesus do that? Why did he just say to them, well, you are healed in instance? As he did with many other illnesses. With those who were lame, blind, deaf. They were cured in an instance. But he told them, go and show yourself to the priests. You see, when we, when we talk about church, we talk about going out. And I've said this many times as well. We have to go out and share the gospel with the community, with, with the world. But here Jesus recognized the, the church institution, the worship institution. Go show yourselves to the priests. The ritual that happened is when you were, when you were a leper and you had this concept of healing and, and you see there's a change on your body and you, it seems like you are, you are healed or you are on the pathway of healing, you had to go to the priest because the priest was the one that declared you clean. Jesus said, I'm going to show you to the priest turned around, and they walked towards the temple. And on their way, what happened? They were cl clean. They were healed. Imagine, the, here are these ten men walking. Flesh are falling off their bones. No face recognition. No hands. And suddenly, boom! Healing took place. Could you imagine the joy these ten lepers experienced? They probably looked at themselves and looked at each other and said, We are healed. We are healed. It's time to go and show ourselves to the priests. And they could not get fast enough to the temple. It wasn't over for them yet. Because the community knew they were lepers. And even they were healed, they had to go to the priest. They had to go, and, and there was a whole ritual to this. They had to take two doves, and, and uh, they were slaughtered in the blood. And there was a, um, blood on the ear, on the elbow, on the toe. And a whole ritual that had to follow of cleansing. And if the priest wasn't too sure, they were sent away. And then they had to come back, do the whole ritual all, all over again. And church might seem to you like this. Oh, it's a, it's, it's a church full of rituals. Oh, we have to sit down, we have to kneel, we have to sing the song, we have to act a certain way, we have to dress a certain way. But you see, the church is a place where sinners, where lepers come together. And they have a meeting with 
Jesus. Jesus told them to go to the priests at the temple. He could have said to them, you know what, you are healed. Forget about these rituals. Go back to your houses and show yourself to your family. Go be reunited with your family. But Jesus directed them to the place of worship. Jesus recognized organization. Today in the 21st century, we say to ourselves, organized worship is outdated, it's obsolete. I'll rather stay home, watch DVDs, or do whatever I want to do. Church won't save me. That's correct, church won't save you. It is your faith in Jesus that will save you. But here's the thing. They turned around, they walked towards the temple. And one man turned around. One man turned around and imagined with joy, hopping, skipping, and dancing. I can't, cannot believe what had happened. And he came and he came back to Jesus. And he didn't just come to Jesus and say, God, thank you so much. He was overjoyed. He fell at the feet of Jesus. Praising God. You see, worship is, is centered in praising God. Not in the church organization. But it is our, our gratitude for what God has done for us that will bring us back to the feet of Jesus. Worship, friends, is centered around Jesus. Now, your worship can take on many forms. Your worship can take in the form of just speaking to God as you are walking. Your worship can, can take a form of, of where you are on your knees, praying and pleading to God. Your worship can be in, 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 in deep study with, with God. Your worship can be in reading God's Word. Your worship can take many forms. And it depends where you are in life. You might have a week where everything is just going your way. And you sing praises as you go. God is good. God is good. God loves me. Jesus loves me. And then you have times where nothing works out for you. Everything goes against you. And there's those times when you, when you sit with your, with your nose in the Bible and, you, and, and on your knees you say, God, please, hear me. Listen to my voice. I don't know which way to go. Sometimes our worship intensifies. Is church still relevant for you? I want to say to you this morning, friends, it is your personal experience with Jesus that determines if church is still relevant to you. It's not about the music. It's not about the church order that determines if church is relevant. It is your personal experience with Jesus on a daily basis that makes church relevant to you. Because if you have a living relationship with Jesus during the week, what is your natural reaction? To come together and worship together at a centralized place and time with other people that have a, an awe for God. It is about Jesus and not about me. When we come to church, friends, I want to sing praises to God. When I'm busy studying the Word of God, I sing praises to God. When I sing to God, I sing praises to God. But when I come to church, on a Sabbath morning, it is when my faith 
is on display. My faith is not in the music. My faith is not in the sermon. My faith is not in the rituals. My faith is in the living experience I have. And it, and it comes down to a Sabbath morning where I can say, God is so good. God has been faithful. Is church still relevant for you? And can you find yourself this morning amongst these ten lepers? We are ridden with sin, friends. We are dirty. We are rejected and lost. But when we see Jesus, we recognize our dependence on Him. When we lock our, our eyes on Jesus, we recognize it's only through Him that we can be saved. And it's only Him that can cleanse us. And then we cry out, Master, have mercy on us. And what does Jesus answer? If you want to be cleansed, I will cleanse you. You are saved. And this morning, Jesus wants to say to you, and he will say this to me. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care how you look. What is important to me is that you recognize me and that you build a life experience with me. That is what church is about. And then we will come to church Without looking at each other, looking at the program, looking at the music, looking at this, looking at that. I will be here because I'm grateful for what Jesus has done for me. That is a true church experience. So friends, it is not if church is relevant to us today. It is how I worship God that will make church relevant to me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we have looked at church and sometimes we look at church in a way that is not pleasing to the eye. But that is the wrong way, Lord, to look at church. We should look at church the way you see church. And Lord, forgive us. For forgive us that we were the cause that many people are despising church. We call out to you this morning, have mercy on us. Cleanse us and heal us. And thank you, Lord, that you are bigger than our problems. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.